the Boeing Starliner epic launch fails. No way to beat SpaceX and Elon Musk. After a very public failure in 2019, Boeing and its Starliner spacecraft have a shot at redemption with their upcoming second test flight, but it will have to wait for now. The uncrewed Orbital Flight Test 2 mission was originally scheduled to launch on Friday, but it was scrubbed due to an unexpected incident at the International Space Station, where it was set to dock. The next launch opportunity is Tuesday at 1.20 p.m. ET. Hello everyone and welcome to Liftoff, your place where you can find everything space and often SpaceX. In today's video, we'll introduce you to Boeing's fail to launch Starliner OFT-2 and how it is seen as a turning point for the company's success as compared to other companies like SpaceX. Let's not waste any time and move forward with the video. Boeing said on Monday that the problem that scrubbed the launch of the Starliner spacecraft last week was caused when 13 valves in its propulsion system failed to properly open during a pre-flight test, a more widespread issue that was previously known. Orbital Flight Test 2 is a repeat of the OFT mission flown at the end of 2019 due to issues encountered in the early stages of that mission. The OFT spacecraft was unable to complete several key test objectives, including rendezvous and docking with the International Space Station. The OFT-2 mission will aim to clear these final hurdles ahead of a crew test flight, with Starliner no earlier than the end of 2021 according to current NASA estimates. Starliner, also known as CST-100, is one of two spacecraft developed with NASA's commercial crew program to provide crew access to the International Space Station on American vehicles, a capability the agency has won when the Space Shuttle retired in 2011. Boeing and SpaceX were selected to develop a new crewed spacecraft, with the latter's Crew Dragon having already transported three crews, a demo mission and two operational rotational flights to the outpost. With the advent of these new crewed spacecraft, NASA has been able to reduce its reliance on Russia's Soyuz spacecraft, which had previously been the only way to transport astronauts to the ISS. Even during the shuttle era, Soyuz was the only spacecraft that could remain on station to provide for crew return in the event of an emergency on a long-duration expedition. Both Starliner and Dragon are designed to remain docked for the duration of their crew's stays. The integrated Starliner spacecraft is 5.0 meters in length and 4.6 meters in diameter. It consists of a pressurized capsule which can seat up to seven astronauts, a service module housing thrusters, AFT-mounted solar panels, propellant, and equipment to support a mission of up to 60 hours of free flight although the spacecraft can remain in orbit for over 220 days once docked to the International Space Station. Over the weekend, engineers were able to open seven of those valves and restore them to working order. The company said it is still hopeful that it could launch the test flight by the end of the month. But Boeing still does not know what caused the problem which forced yet another delay in a program that has been plagued by serious issues for years. Boeing is developing Starliner under a contract with NASA to fly the space agency's astronauts to and from the International Space Station. Elon Musk's SpaceX, the other company that holds the commercial crew contract, has now flown three human spaceflight missions to the space station, but Boeing has struggled with its program and has lagged far behind. Before it flies a test mission with astronauts, Boeing must first launch an uncrewed mission that would demonstrate that the autonomous spacecraft can meet up with the station in orbit dock, survive the vacuum of space, and then fly back to Earth safely. Once those milestones are achieved, NASA would then greenlight a flight with astronauts on board. Boeing's first attempt at the uncrewed mission in December 2019 went awry because of a software malfunction that prevented the spacecraft from docking with the station. That touched off an investigation by NASA which said it needed to be more rigorously overseeing Boeing's work. But after being forced to stand down for a year and a half, Boeing had said that it had fixed those problems and was finally ready to fly. Boeing had been planning to redo the mission on July 30th, but the launch was delayed after a Russian module docked with the station, but then inadvertently fired its thrusters, sending the station into a harrowing spin. The Starliner launch was rescheduled to August 3rd, but Boeing and NASA announced that it would be delayed after it discovered unexpected value position indications in the propulsion system. At the time, Boeing said the problem was detected after electrical storms passed over Cape Canaveral the day before the launch, leaving open the possibility that a lightning strike could have been the cause of a problem. Officials at NASA, however, were skeptical that lightning had any effect, and Boeing hacked away from the claim, saying in a statement on August 4th that the storm appears to be an unlikely cause, 
but it said it would look closely for water or electrical damage during vehicle inspections. The spacecraft is still mounted on the top of the Atlas V rocket, which is operated by the United Launch Alliance, a joint venture between Boeing and Lockheed Martin. Tori Bruno, ULA's CEO, has said repeatedly that the problem is with the spacecraft, not the rocket. In a tweet last week, Boeing thanked a number of its partners, including Aerojet Rocketdyne, for supplying and supporting the propulsion system being evaluated. Aerojet Rocketdyne, which is being acquired by Lockheed Martin, declined to comment on the tweet or what role, if any, it had in the problem. The valves are very important to the spacecraft's ability to fly. They connect to thrusters that allow the capsule to abort in an emergency, and they also help the spacecraft maneuver while in orbit. To investigate the issue, the rocket with the capsule on top was rolled off the launch pad into a structure nearby, known as the Vertical Integration Facility, where engineers have been investigating why the valves did not open and how best to get them working again. On Friday, John Vollmer, Boeing's vice president and Starliner program manager expressed confidence that his engineers would be able to fix the problem. Cautiously optimistic is a good way to describe how the team is feeling, he said in a statement. Over the weekend, the team made positive progress, a spokesperson said on Monday, allowing the company to continue to plan for a launch this month. The company has found no signs of damage or external corrosion. Boeing said in a statement on Monday, Test teams are now applying mechanical, electrical, and thermal techniques to prompt the valve openings. As a result, more than half of the valves are now operating as designed, it said, and work would continue on the others in the days ahead. In a blog post, NASA said that if all value functionality can be restored and root cause identified, NASA would work with Boeing to determine a path to flight for the important uncrewed mission to the space station. The earliest opportunity would come in mid-August, it said. But Boeing does not know what caused the valves to remain closed when they needed to be open position, and it's unclear how long determining that would take. As a result, some of the aerospace industry are skeptical that company would launch this month. The mission is seen as a critical one for Boeing, and it's yet to launch astronauts for NASA, while its commercial crew program competitor SpaceX has flown multiple cruise missions to the space station, in addition to multiple cargo flights. Boeing is also still reeling from the fallout related to issues with its 737 MAX jets. If the Starliner fails to launch again, it'll be difficult to see how it'll be able to remain competitive against SpaceX for NASA contracts. What do you think? Will Boeing be able to successfully launch its orbital flight test, OFT2, sooner? Let us know in your opinion in the comments section down below. If you want to stay updated with upcoming space videos, subscribe and hit the notification button. Thank you so much for your support and I hope to see you again.